we've got Gladwell talking about the power of words, the importance of words. This is why we need to talk with our kids. This is why we need to give them the right to speak, the right to have conversations. Otherwise, they end up taken out of life and taken out of culture and society almost completely. And there's no way back if we don't get it early. I mentioned an, an E word a moment ago. When I talk about education, I don't think about the three R's. I think about the six E's. Engage, enthuse, encourage, enable, empower, and enrich. How many do we have time for? I'm afraid in your average school day, I know probably not many. Uh, and a lot of what Jeanette talks about is having permission to do things, being allowed to do things. We want you to have permission to converse, permission to talk with the children, to tell them stories and to listen to their stories, to listen to their wishes. And we can start to do many more of these. We'll, we'll leave this one up, up for you to, to photograph, to, to pass around. Another quick little story that we can all join in with and take this into class. Uh, everybody knows the story of the gingerbread man. Yes, I think we all, we all know the gingerbread man. We can tell it in our own way. Um, we need to practice, we need to experiment because you know, nobody gets it right first time. Yes, we, we all have to practice, we have to cross out uh, and go back and rewrite things. Now, stories are different for everybody. Uh, different things enthuse different people. Um, for me, Getting onto a football field when I was in school and being told to kick a ball or to be in a football team or a rugby team or anything was as terrifying and as numbing as being told to stand up and pretend to be a woodcutter is for some of you people. So I know it's, we all have our own thing that we can be enthusiastic about, that we can be good. Enthuse. Have we got enthuse or enthusiastic on that list? I think we have. So, of course, choose your own thing. Find your own stories that you want to tell. Something we were talking about earlier was the fact that nowadays we tend not to... One reason we don't get stories as much at home is we don't get the family stories related by parents, grandparents, sometimes even great-grandparents. When I was um, a child, my, when all my grandparents were still alive, my, my dad's dad was born at the very beginning of the Edwardian period, and he fought in both world wars. My great uncle was at Dunkirk, and they had, they had that whole 20th, well, whole 20th century up to the 1960s, they had that whole experience to draw on. They'd actually had a life that some of us, well, hopefully, will never even have to imagine, but they had those tales and those stories. People live very different lives in our grandparents' time, that's to be my generation now, in our grandparents' time to us. Now we're living in a world where over the last 40 years or so, things maybe ain't changed all that much, unless you do have you know, somebody in your family who travels a lot or maybe is in the forces or whatever it might be, who has that different life, you're not gonna get the same sorts of, of oral history. You're not gonna get those same stories related. Uh, so we need to maybe, to start to develop that in the class a little bit as well. But choose your own story, your own, from your own life. And it doesn't have to be huge, it doesn't have to be momentous. It could be something that happened to you on the way into school this morning. But children will love listening to you tell them just about anything. If we can get down, not, not right now, but in class, if we can get down with our children to the same level so that they are, they're looking into our faces and not looking up at us like that. Or if we can get children sitting at a table at a height where we can join them sitting down and engage with them on a social level and to maybe break down for that storytelling time or that it's okay permission to converse, permission to talk time, if we can make it a social safe time rather than just teacher child relationship and teacher child time, that might also help. So again, just for a minute or so, have a think about a story that you love, that you like. Right.
there's me saying permission to converse, and then as soon as we do get talking, I stop you all again. <laughs> um, and it didn't really matter then whether you were sort of starting to tell a little story to each other or whether you'd, you'd just got into conversation about things. That's fine. That's the whole point. We just got into talking about, of course, you said quite rightly, they don't have any imagination. It's so hard, I know. It's not me standing up here saying, oh, well, if we do this, then the children will suddenly start talking. Of course they won't, because they don't have that imaginative life. You were talking about, and when I walked in here, I saw, thankfully, all around the room, what if there was an elephant outside the window? Brilliant. That's exactly the sort of thing we should be having everywhere. So they have so little life experience, they don't know what it feels like to stand on the edge of a raging river for the gingerbread man. They don't have an idea of what it might be like to go for a walk in the woods or for a picnic or even to a park. So, yeah, what we're expecting them to do is so beyond their experience, it's, it's unfair. This is one reason why I'm, I'm analogue and not digital, why I wave these bits of laminate at card about rather than doing a PowerPoint. Because I know that laptops, using your whiteboards and everything, fantastic equipment to use in the classroom, wonderful tools. But we mustn't start relying on them too much and certainly not start thinking, well, the kids have got all this stuff at home and they're used to watching a screen, so if we don't use a screen, they're not going to listen to us. Uh-uh, that's not true. Because no matter what you've got, what equipment you've got in the classroom, I can guarantee that the money and the time that's gone into the development and the graphics of your educational packages isn't one-tenth of what's been spent on the games that they've got at home. So the chances are they'll look at it and think, I've got better than this at home, and they'll switch off. But what they don't have, and what we started to talk about there, what they don't get at home and what you can provide for them is this, that engagement with meeting eye contact and, t and talking, live performance. And so that, I'm, I'm convinced that that is the beginning to helping them with an imaginative life. If they've had no stories, going back to the beginning again, no reading culture at home, a third of children in, um, in Britain at the moment, a third of children have no books at all. And we were just saying that, I know, if you're struggling to, to pay the food bills, if you haven't bought, been able to buy a new pair of shoes for your kids for 12 or 18 months, then books aren't very high on your agenda, I know. So we have to come in and, and fill that gap to give them a, a, an emotional engagement, to give them an imaginative life. Because I'm, I believe that all kids have it buried deep down inside. They've all got an imaginative life that they lo they'd like to get out. Play is a perfectly natural thing, right through the animal kingdom. You know, you, you, see, you see young animals playing together, play fighting, because they're learning how to cope with the real world. You know, kids, kids you see in playgrounds, they don't play games anymore. We used to have all sorts of, well, probably because you were not allowed to let them play them anymore, because health and safety come down with a great big boot, and so they can't do, they might fall over. And we see the uh, Times Educational Supplement last week about wrapping children in, in cling film and not allowing them to, to, to get hurt. But children seem to have lost the ability to play with each other, let alone talk and have an imaginative life. No chase games, no ball games. They tend to stand around, or they might just push each other occasionally. So I say I'm convinced that telling stories like this will help to, to show them how to have an imaginative life. And the magic if, asking what if, if that was really real, what would you do next? What would you say? How would you react? You can do everything you like, you can put them in the tunnels and we can pretend it's a bridge with the billy goats gruff trip trapping but they sit there and think but how do i know i haven't done anything like this before like the boy who hasn't had happy birthday sung to him uh, like the class i was in um, in Middlesbrough a few years ago and I did something on the sea and I was talking about the raging sea and the power of the sea crashing onto the onto the beach and the stories we got back were were so were so basic and the teacher said, Chris, none of them have been to see, none of them know what it's like at the beach. They haven't seen the sea. And I said, no, I'm sorry, that's my fault. I presumed that living in Middlesbrough, a short bus ride away or a short train ride away from Redcar and Saltburn and all this, I just thought they'd have been on a day trip. I said, no. Nope. And as you know, they won't go anywhere. So I'm afraid we need to start ourselves. And I said, conversation, big way of doing it. 
we probably went off into different conversations of our own, which is fine. But um, think, think about a story that you enjoyed when you were young, for your classes. A favourite tale, it doesn't matter what it is. Or I say steer clear of Fifty Shades. Um, one that you enjoyed, uh, a joke that's clean, <laughs> that you want to share with them. Uh, and find your own way of telling that. And use... Use one of your circles, use one of the work trees that, um, that Jeanette will, will introduce um, in more detail than I have now to build up your own way of telling it and act it out. Use your bathroom mirrors at home, that's what they're there for, to, to try out your facial expressions, try out ways of movement, yeah? Um, get them to join in. Tomorrow I'll be working with, with some of your classes and we'll do some drama games and we'll get them joining in, in groups. We might do a little bit of circle time and storytelling there. Whoa.